Mala Sabdi's here. Uh, we are in Mala Sabdi's studio in Sacramento. Super, super excited to be with you guys today. We are announcing the winners for the Lala in La La Land contest that Sexy Hair was so amazing to put together. For those of you who are not familiar but are still watching, I uh, recommend you guys to stay tuned in because we are going to go over um, a mohawk, a braided mohawk. Um, I want to touch base a little bit about the um, the contest with you. So for those of you who are not familiar with what we're doing here today, um, Sexy Hair came up with a, a contest. Um, everyone was um, free to enter, everyone um, from the United States and Canada. Um, Sexy Hair is picking 10 winners. We already picked those 10 winners. And the winners will get to spend a few days with us in LA, see the most iconic places in LA. We are going to spend amazing time together. And they get to spend a day with me while we're doing the hands-on class. So you guys will get to learn a little bit and spend time with me. Um, I will go over the winners really quick. I don't want to keep you guys too long. I want you guys to know that we were so impressed with your entries. We were absolutely blown uh, our mind with, with your entries. It was so, so hard for us to choose. Uh, we had over 7,500 entries for this contest. Yes, 7,500 over for uh, this contest. So it was a really, really hard uh, work for us to choose the 10 winners. I wish I could have choose all of you. You guys did amazing and I was so impressed with your work. Uh, we narrowed it down to 100 and um, then we had, unfortunately, to pick 10 of you. So I will go really quick over that. Uh, meanwhile, if you guys have any questions, um, when we're done with this, we will go back and answer your questions. Um, I can answer questions related to the style that I will do and the products that I'm going to use. But as far as the contest goes, Sexy Hair will be the one in touch with you, sending you all the details and what it's next. So, yay, let's go over the winners. Do we have anyone on yet? Yes. We do. You can say hi to Nora. Hi, Nora. Rose. Hey, Vanessa. Sarah. Hi, everyone. So, the first one out of 10 is Brittany B. And her Instagram is Hair by Brittany. Beautiful, beautiful style. One of the trendiest of 2017. Uh, this, is, this was actually one of the most requested styles in my chair. Beautiful work, Brittany. Congratulations. I cannot wait to spend time with you in LA. We're gonna go to our next one. So this was Brittany B. And her Instagram is here by Brittany. The next one is Katie A. And her Instagram account is Katie Anzalone. I hope that I'm saying her name correctly. Beautiful style. I love the edgy mohawks. That's what we're going to go over um, today, but it's going to be a different mohawk. So congratulations, Katie. Going to the next one. Our next one is Nicole H. And her Instagram is hairby.nicole. Beautiful twisted updo. I love these boho styles. Very trendy. Going to our next one. Our next winner is Alicia J. And the Instagram name for that is Alicia Jared Hair Artistry. Congratulations, Alicia. Going to the next one. We have another braided updo done by Brittany S. And her Instagram is Beauty by Brittany RVA. Congratulations, Brittany. Going to our next one. We have Robin J. And the Instagram name is Hair by Robin One. Beautiful classic style. Our next one is Amy S. And her Instagram is Amy Baby underscore two. I think this was one of the most popular styles that I've seen on Instagram in the last two weeks. I've seen the style everywhere. And we loved it too. So congratulations, Amy. Going to our next one. Look at this work. Absolutely amazing. So unique. 
This is Pam W. And the Instagram name is PWEB here. Congratulations, Pam. I look forward to meet all of you. Going to our next one. Look at this. So as you guys see, we chose a variety of styles. We went for the classic looks, we went for the edgy looks, we went for something uh, more unique that you don't see out there all the time. And this is Jose D. And the Instagram name is M-U-A Jose Miguel. Beautiful, beautiful look. I cannot wait to, to meet this guy. And everyone else and maybe I'll learn something from you guys going to our next one and this is our last one Sophia G and the Instagram name is Mrs. Snake J Jonas 716 and another angle from this style this is what we are going to actually recreate today why did I choose to recreate the style out of all the styles? Because um, mohawks are known for um, height and lift from the scalp. And a lot of people, when I post an updo um, that uh, looks like a mohawk, they are always, always asking me, how do you make the hair stay up? How do you achieve that height from the scalp without teasing and keep it clean at the same time? So I chose this one because I wanna show you guys how to achieve that volume and how to get that lift from the scalp. And in order to do so, to achieve that clean mohawk, you will actually have to use a tool. So that's what I'm going over for. So one more time, I'm going really fast over this for those of you that didn't watch from the beginning. So we have Brittany B. We have Katie. We have Nicole. We have Alicia. Brittany, Robin, Amy, Pam, Jose, and Sophia. For all of you that didn't catch this from the beginning, you will be able to go back and watch this video. Once again, Sexy Hair was amazing putting this contest together. We had all over 7,500 entries and we had a really, really hard time to choose the 10 winners. So all these winners are going to spend three days with me in LA. Uh, Sexy Hair will contact you and give you all the details about what's next. Um, please stay with me and let's go over this beautiful style and how to achieve it. Um, if you guys wanna see the um, the 100 finalists that made it through the finalist, uh, we're gonna uh, post a um, link for you to go and see the finalist. And for the 10 winners, again, you can always uh, look at uh, our uh, live Facebook. So let's go over this really quick. Um, this style that we are going over, the braided mohawk, I previously uh, prepped the hair with the newest tool from Sexy Hair. Now, let me tell you guys, this is a must that you can uh, that you should have in your kit. Because if you're doing bridal hair, you know that all the um, hair is different. You have different texture, different volume, layers, you name it, okay? So for each particular person, you will have to use different tools and different product. So every time I have a person that is looking for volume and texture and they do not like to see a lot of um, product into the hair, this is my best tool. So Sexy Hair just came up with this. It's called the old crimper. We all, we all use these back in the 80s and it's coming back. It's very trendy, but I'm not using this specifically for the crimper. Why am I using this? Because it gives me the texture and the volume and the lift from the scalp that I need for people with fine hair or for that specific style. And in this case, we all know that the Mohawks are known for that lift and from that volume. So that's the reason I prepped the hair with this crimper. What I loved about this, compared to other crimpers that I used before. It's ceramic, it's not metal. And look at this long plate. So you get to get a, a huge amount of hair in this and it probably cuts your time in half using this. 
Amazing tool to have in your kit. Why? One, it gives you that lift from the scalp without using any product or without teasing. Second, it gives you all that texture that you need to control the hair. Second, if you have clients with fine hair, a lot of them, doesn't matter what you do, how much product you're using, or how you're gonna do that style, you're still going to be able to see their, um, their scalp and they don't like that. So when I have clients like that, this is the best tool to use. I'm always crimping their hair two to three fingers from the scalp and that's how I get that lift and you're not gonna be able to see their, their scalp anymore. If they are not bothered by the, the look of the crimper, I usually go all the way to the ends. That way I get the volume, I get the texture, I get the lift. If there are people that don't like that, there is a way to do it and get what you need and um, give them what they want. I usually, when they don't like to see the crimper, I go one by one, meaning I take one section, I crimp it, I leave one out. I crimp one section, I leave one out. And when I uh, brush all that, you're not going to be able to see the crimper into the hair. Or I go and crimp the whole head and I just leave the uh, top part out. So the best tool to have in your kit, the crimper. We already prepped the hair with the, with the crimper. It has a temperature, you can uh, put it on um, any temperature you want. Um, I lost my thought, guys. I'm super excited for this contest. So let's get to work. Um, let me prep the hair a little bit. Let me go a little bit over my favorite products because every time I post a picture or I post a tutorial, everyone is asking me about that. And I promised you guys that I will do uh, a live Instagram and go over all the tools and all the product that I like to use the most and I never find time for that So I will go a little bit over the product. So my favorite products to go is the volumizing powder We always need a little bit of volume regardless of what you're doing My favorite one is the one from big uh, from sexy hair, of course And the reason I like this one. It's a very light powder It's not very heavy and it liquefies right away after you massage it in the hair So even if you use it on dark hair, it's not going to show and we all know most of the volumizing powders, when you use it on dark hair, they show. Or once they start to sweat, it looks like they have dandruff. This never happened with this product. So the light powder, the powder play light from Sexy Hair. And what I love about this one is that it has a pump. So remember guys, in the past, we used to do this. And then we will try to like get that product all over the hair and you will get too much or too less or it was never enough. So with this one, you can actually control where you put the product and how much product you're using. So the powder play light, this is my favorite. I actually prepped her hair on the roots a little bit with this. And let me show you guys how easy it is to um, use this. But don't forget, um, just spraying the product into the hair is not going to do the, the, the work you'll actually have to go back and massage the product into the hair. And very light. And especially on the top. Mohawks are known for that height on the top, so that's where we're gonna use the most. And again, the hair was prepped with the crimper. Can you guys see? You can't even see the crimper into the hair. That's what I love so much about this. You get the volume. Look at this. When I'm trying to hold this in my hand, I can't even like wrap it, it's that much hair. That's what that crimper does to the hair. So if they do not have a lot of hair, they will look like they have a ton of it after you use that crimper. So we spray this volumizing powder. I'm going to massage her hair a little bit to get that product into the hair. And look at that, instant volume, ta-da! We didn't even do anything to the hair yet. Imagine if you would go and actually tease this hair. Can you guys see what we got it here? No. My uh, second product, my second favorite product is the Get Layer. This is what I use for all my styles. Everything that you see on my page, it has this hairspray used. It's the Get Layer from Sexy Hair. It's a four to six hold. That's kind of like a medium hold. I cannot stress enough about the stronghold, guys. You do not need to use a stronghold hairspray unless you're not touching that hair anymore. So work your way through with the medium hold. Why do I love this hairspray compared to all their uh, hairs? I mean, all their lines. They have a lot of products, and I have discovered this one working the best for me. And the reason for that, it's a very dry hairspray, and especially when you have bridal parties, you have to be like this, right? In three four hours, you have to get uh, done fifteen to twenty people. So you do not need a, a hairspray that you have to wait for that to dry or, or get the hair sticky. 
very dry hairspray. You put it on, and what I love about this, it's a buildable volume. And and uh, how should I put it? When I say buildable, means that you can use as much as you want, and then brush the hair and start all over again, and you're not going to get that white powder on the hair. That's why I love this. Very dry and it's buildable. So you're not gonna see that product into the hair right after you started to use it. You can use it several times and the hair is still going to fill and look clean. So the Get Layer from Sexy Hair. And I always, always finish with this. One of my favorites, the Rose Alex hair. Why do I love this one? One, you can use it um, as a detangler. When you wash your hair, you can actually use this on tall, dry hair as a detangler and a live-in conditioner. When I finish my updos, I always use this for extra shine and get rid of the frizz. And what I love the most about it is that uh, you can use it on your own skin. So if you forget your lotion at home, you can actually do this as a body lotion. It's safe for your um, skin. So these are my to-go products and I'm going to get into the uh, style like I said, we're going over that braided mohawk and the reason I chose that style is because I got a lot of requests about that particular style as you saw the picture I, I um, showed you um, It's just a few braids in there nothing difficult But uh, the problem that everyone is telling me about is the height and the volume so we prep the hair with the crimper we put the uh, volumizing powder and we are going with a simple braid, the French braid. Why am I going for the French braid? Because if I'm going for the French versus of the Dutch or the fish gel, those have the tendency to uh, lay flat into uh, on the scalp. When I go for the French, and if I want to achieve that height, I can actually go and pull and achieve that height. So that's why I chose the uh, French braid when I do um, Mohawks versus of the fish gel or the Dutch braid. So we're going for a regular French braid. Meanwhile, guys, feel free to ask questions. Again, if the questions are related to the contest, please be patient. We are going to get back to you and give you all the details. Uh, if it's related to product, my work, or any styles, feel, feel free to ask and I'm here to answer your questions. What I love when I do braids, any of those that have braids incorporated, I always like, let's say I'm going for a braided updo, okay? I know this is not related to this mohawk, but I want to touch that base with you. Every time I have a, um, like two of the, um, the updos that I showed you guys on that tablet are updos with the braid incorporated. And everyone is telling me that they have a hard time to blend in those braids when they do. They see that line of demarcation between the, the braids and the actual updo. So I have discovered, and I saw a lot of people, and I used to do that as well. I would build my updo, and then I will leave the braid last, and I will attach that too. And that's when that line of demarcation um, happens. Because what you have left is just that one piece of hair. So you cannot go and, and pick other pieces of hair. That's, that's all. So you cannot break that line of demarcation. But if you're starting with the braid first, and take your section in a zigzag versus of a straight line, then it's gonna be really easy for you to blend in the top and the actual updo with the braid. So every time I have to incorporate the braid, I always start with the braid first. And I always take my section in a zigzag versus of a straight line. And when you're done, you're not going to see that line of demarcation in between. So if you guys notice that, when I uh, grab my section, I actually go, I'm not going for a straight line. I'm always picking them in a zigzag pattern just to make that um, blend in better and not see any line of demarcation. Do we have any questions? You do, from Rubina. How do you keep the curl, how to keep curls long last? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. Very, very good question. Now, let me tell you guys how I make my curls last longer. Number one rule to make your curls last longer is every time you take a piece of hair and you put product into it, and I see a lot of people doing that, and I'm not saying that is wrong. I'm just telling you what I have discovered working the best for me and what I have discovered that works, I mean, makes the, the, um, the curls last longer. Every time I 
uh, touch a piece of hair first I brush it really well I make sure that I don't have any tangles in there or anything and I go and I put product on the top and the bottom as well meaning hairspray I'm always working with medium hold and then I am brushing that product into the hair if you're just hairspraying that piece of hair and then right away you put that curling iron into the hair that product is it's actually going to burn on that curling iron it's not going to get into the uh, that section of the hair and that's why the the curls are not lasting because the product was on the top layer and it was burned by the heat okay that's one one way to make your um, curls last longer the second thing that i have discovered about curls is that if they are not hanging in there on their own if you have a base to pin the base of that curl into a base those curls are supported by that base and the heaviness of that piece of hair is not hanging there by itself it's supported by a base and makes those curls last longer okay another tip to make them clean actually because that's the biggest problem everyone is telling me i know how to curl and i know how to pin hair i just don't know how to make those curls last and i don't know how to make it clean the more hair spray and the more i touch it the more messier it becomes so i have discovered that instead of um if i curl and pin as i go i'm gonna get a totally clean look why because curling the hair all the way to the ends and then touching it over and over again you're actually messing with that hair and you're messing with the with the curls and most of the brides and the bridesmaids are coming with the hair super clean right so that means more freeziness and harder to control so i have discovered that if i curl and pin as i go then all my updos are curl, uh, clean all my curly updos and when i say curl and pin meaning you're gonna take one piece you're gonna curl it and you're gonna leave that to cool down. You're gonna go on the other side, you're gonna curl another one, let that one cool down and go to your previous one that had time to set and cool down. You're gonna take that and pin it. Go and curl another one, let it cool down and set, go to your previous one that had time to cool down, go and pin. So that's what I mean by curling and pinning at the same time. If the hair is super frizzy, there are people, it doesn't matter what you do and how much you prep the hair, you're still gonna have people with frizzy hair. If that's the case, you're gonna get a little bit of mousse in your hand, not too much. You don't want to get that hair um, uh, wet. You're gonna put a little bit of mousse and you're gonna go over that curl by twisting. You're not gonna do this because if you do this, you're gonna mess with the curl. You're gonna take that curl, put that mousse in your hair and do this. And when you do this, you're actually cleaning all the flyaways with the mousse. Why the mousse? Uh, I don't know how it is in other states. I live in California here. During the summer, it gets up to 115. So it's super, super hot. Why do I use the uh, mousse instead of the uh, any pomade or anything that has an oil base? Because it doesn't affect my curls. So once they start to sweat or they go out in the sun, if they have a, a product that it's, it has an oil base, usually that makes the curls uh, last uh, less. So that's the reason I use uh, mousse. Um, let me show you guys what I use. So this is my favorite one. It's called Bel Bel Big Altitude from Sexy Hair. It gives you a lot of volume, but at the same time allows me to keep those curls clean. And let me show you how much uh, product I put into my hand usually. Not more than this. Like I said, you do not want to get those curls uh, um, wet or mess with them. And I'm doing this, and then I'm just going over that curl. But not like this, again, you're twisting. You wanna keep that curl, you're just trying to uh, get rid of the flyaways. Did that answer your question, guys? Well, it certainly answered mine. Thank you so much for that. Well, Heather loves your dress. Oh, thank you. It's actually from uh, from Romania. My mom brought it to me. Alejandra says, can you prep the hair before to prevent frizz and how? I always have problems with frizz, which I think you covered that. Is there anything more you might add to that? There are, I have, uh, when I have bridal parties, I have clients that come with the hair washed on the same day and it's very silky and it's very freezy and some people just have that texture. No, no matter what you do or how you prep the hair, you're gonna have to deal with that freeziness. If I do have a client with, with um, the hair like that, I always have um, 
I always have assistance with me when I take bridal parties. So if you do have a bridal party, I always, always recommend you to have um, an assistant with you just in case someone needs to prep the hair for the bridal party that you have. And they always prep the hair and I just take over and I do the style. So if I do have a client like that, I usually have my assistant um, uh, spray their hair with a little bit of water and blow dry it. And we put a little bit of mousse or pomade depending on the style that we're going for. And uh, we're going with high heat when we blow dry and we're trying to get rid of that um, that craziness by blow drying. So that's another way. But for that, like when you do bridal parties, you do not have a lot of time to do that. So I really recommend you guys to have an assistant with you. Well, that sounds amazing. I hope that's so helpful to you out there. Carolyn, I'm sorry you didn't hear anything until we started applying the product. Did she say crimp the hair first? Yes, she did. Do you want to touch on that just again for the ones that just Again, in? in order to achieve this, if you guys saw, for those of you that watched this from the beginning, we didn't tease the hair at all. We just used the crimper and we used a little bit of volumizing powder. And can you guys see the height that we um, achieved from the roots without teasing the hair or doing anything? So the crimper, it's, your, it's the best tool to have in your kit. If you do not have it in your bridal stylist, I really, really recommend you guys to invest in one. So there we go. I'm going to secure that and I'm going to split this into different sections because so I'm going to have to wrap this around the bun and I'm not going to be to be able to do it if I have one section. So that's why I'm going for two now. Do you have any other questions? Well, Haley says you're a genius. Never thought of the zigzag pattern for the blend. Oh, thank hey, you. And all over Joy to Texas. What are your favorite brands for curling irons? Ah, uh, sexy hair, of course. <laughs> you guys see, I have all their products, all their lines in there, and they do have a flat iron, they have a crimper, and they have a curling iron as well. How do you maintain the braid from braiding clean? How to maintain the braid from braiding clean? I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure. Frida, you want to repost that question? Maybe we can answer it a little better. She says, keep, we have Cindy Hensley, so keep doing the hair. They love it. You're genius. Yay, Baba. <laughs> um, let's see. I do the same way. You're telling me, but still have the same problem. That's Rubina again. The same way what? I think she, that was the lady um, from the first give us, question. Give us some details, and maybe I can help. Hi from Texas. Hello, Hello Texas. Hey, Canada. Now, let me show you guys how to pancake. I was talking about curls, and I told you in order to keep those curls clean um, and make them last, you will have to curl and pin as you go. It's the same with braids. When you see all those big braids, in order to keep them clean, if you want to keep them clean, you will have to braid and pull as you go. Uh, in my beginnings, I used to uh, braid the hair all the way down and then start to pull. But once the hair was secured by the braid itself and by the elastic, it was really, really hard for me to pancake that uh, braid and make it um, look nice and neat. So I have discovered that if I do that as I go, and what I mean by that is this, I will braid two, three rows and then I will go to pull. I'm not waiting until the braid is done. Can you guys see? And I'm not really pulling, I'm actually fanning with my nails. You guys see? And let me show you how big you can go. Can you guys see? Of course I'm over exaggerating right now, but I just want to show you guys how easy it is for you to pull when you do it as you go. And you do not wait until you're done with the braid. Rubina also wants to know, and I think you touched on this earlier, but would you restate whether they can use mousse for curls? What was that? Can they use mousse for curls? When they uh, curl the, the curl, the actual curl? I'm thinking, Rubini, you want to make that question a little more clear? But she's saying, can we use mousse for curls? Uh, I use the mousse to clean them, not to make them stay. When, um, when I do the curls, I actually use uh, hairspray. I'm not using mousse. And honestly, I have, I have never tried. I know they clean, if I use the mousse, it cleans really well, but I have never tried to actually put mousse and then curl. 
because that has a wet base. So I wouldn't like to put any hot tools on wet hair. That's, I think it's a matter of preference. But again, guys, please do not take anything that I'm telling you in this live Facebook uh, session as a rule. I am not an educator. If you looked at my page, it doesn't say educated in there. This was a hobby and it was a talent that I have discovered only two and a half years ago. Everything that I'm sharing with you today is something that I have discovered down the road working the best for me. So if you discovered any tools, any product that works the best for you, use that one, okay? But do not take my word for granted. Please try what I'm sharing with you and make the difference and choose whatever works the best for you, okay? I promise you all the tools and all the tips and all the products that I have shared with you are actually products and tools that I have tried and they work amazing. So please try it before you go with your hands. So we're going on the sides. Like you guys see, we just did a simple braid. We're going on the sides. Actually, I'm gonna go with this first. So what are your favorite must-have products in your kit? If you can touch on that while you're showing them. I just touched that when we started. So for those of you that didn't watch that from the beginning, please go back when we're done with this and um, watch it because I touched that subject in the beginning about all my uh, to-go products and what I love with the most. Jordina so also says, thank you so much for the information. And Danielle says, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, thank you. Alejandra, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Irene from Coronado, what finishing spray would you recommend Stronghold without leaving the hair wet or stiff? I would, um, of course, I recommend the Big Sexy Hair. They have a really strong hold one. And I'm only using that when I actually ask my client at least 10 times if they are happy with it and I turn the chair around and I show them a mirror and if they told me at least five times that they are okay with it that's when I use the stronghold hairspray because once you touch the hair with whole stronghold hairspray good luck going back and brushing that and making that uh, look clean especially when you're working on brunettes. Vanessa missed this. What brand is the hair crimper Lella? The hair crimp is a sexy hair. Ooh, sexy hair. Of course. And I think we can show that again. There you go. Look at this, guys. Look at this plate, how big it is. Can you imagine how much hair you can fit in that? And it's ceramic, it's not metal, which makes it even more healthier for the hair. So going back to my braid. Now, if you guys don't know, a lot of people, when you do these, um, when you do the crimper, the hair might look frizzy, or if they have short layers, those short layers might stick out like this. So if that's the case, if you do have someone that doesn't like to see that, you can actually crimp the hair and curl in the same time. And when you curl the hair, if they have any short layers, those are going to stick out because they are short layers, but they are going to follow the pattern that you're creating. So they are kind of like bending with the style that you're creating. Let me take one of these and secure at the bottom. Do we have any other questions? We do. Can you curl the hair after it has been crimped? Yes, you can actually do that in the same time. So I think that's something we have to go over. Let me put this on and I will show you guys how to crimp and how to curl in the same time. Why do it twice if you could do it in one step, right? And actually I do the same when I do curls or I'm going for the big waves. I'm actually doing those with a, a flat iron and um, I do the uh, curls with a flat iron. But I will show you guys how to crimp and how to... Can we have you like this? So we're going for a regular braid again. Now please be creative. I'm just trying to recreate exactly the same style that we saw in that picture. But you can go with a Dutch braid on the side, you can go with the fishtail, you can go with two or three small braids instead of one. Can you when you're pulling the braid, does it matter what part you pinch out or pull out? Well, depending what you're trying to emphasize in that. Because if you're pulling this, this is what you're going to see. Can you guys see? So you're going to get that design. 
If you're trying to emphasize the middle, then you should go and pull the middle only. So depending of really what you're trying to show. Can you guys see? Now I have to go back because that needs to be tied. This is a mohawk. But I wanted to show you guys which part you're supposed to pull. And again, that depends on what you're trying to create and emphasize in that style. I'm going to finish this braid and then I will show you guys how to, um, to crimp and curl in the same time. And that, um, Katie asked, did you crimp all her roots and do you crimp all the way down the hair? From the video, it's hard to see the crimp. Yeah, it's very hard to see because you can't really see it. That's what that's the wonder of that crimper. That's why I love it so much. It gives you the results, but you can't really see it. In this particular case, I went and I crimped the whole hair from the roots all the way to the ends. But again, if there is someone who doesn't need that much, they just need a little bit of lift from the roots, then you're just going to... Oh, that's part of the bottom. You're just going to... Um, do the roots. I lost my thought again. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but um, I'm getting married this weekend, so I'm kind of in the ninth cloud again here. I think the last time I did a live uh, Facebook, um, I just got engaged. And this weekend I'm getting married. <laughs> so my thoughts are all over the place right now. And you see guys, I'm going and I'm pulling the middle because I wanna, um, I wanna put some design in there. Can you do this look on naturally curly hair? Uh, you can totally do that, but I don't think the, the uh, design will be so defined. The curls are not going to show, to let the, the, the style show. Can you guys see what I just did? We're going to finish this braid and then I'll show you on the other side how to curl and crimp in the same time. I don't want to keep you guys too long. I know you're all busy. I want to congratulate the winners again and I want to give a big thank you to all the people. I mean 7,500 entries, that's absolutely amazing. You guys made me cry. I couldn't believe that there were that many and the work, absolutely amazing. I am so blessed guys to, to be part of this and I want to thank Sexy Hair for having me um, be part of this and I want to thank you guys for doing this. This wouldn't be possible without you. And I want to thank Behind the Chair for letting us uh, taking over their page today. Sabina says, is the Stronghold hairspray good to spray once finished curling the hair to wear down? Yes. Okay. So um, let's say we never prepped this hair with the crimper, right? This is the first time we're touching the hair with the crimper. And I want to get it... Um, crimped and I want to get get it curly in the same time because I have short layers. Let's pretend we have a client with short layers. So um, we're doing this and you twist the hair and you keep doing this all the way to the ends. And that's how you crimp and curl in the same time. And you don't really have to hold the hair in there. This crimper looks I mean, works really well. Can you guys see? Pretty curly, huh? There's the curl. So you can crimp and curl at the same time. If you have a person with uh, short layers. Let me turn this off and finish this. Thank you. And we are going for another braid on the side. Are you ready for another question? Absolutely. Well, Jose said, I lost you five for five minutes. Can you explain to us to pull the hair from the braids without creating a mess? How to? Yeah, well, my my way to keep the, the braids clean without messing them is to pull as I go. You guys see what I'm doing right now? I will braid another row and then I'll start to pull. So I'm not waiting until I'm done with the braids to actually pull because that's when it becomes messy. The hair is secured by the braid itself and by the elastic. So when I try to pull, I do not have the flexibility to pull as much as I want because the braid is locked already. So I'm braiding and I'm pulling as I go. And I'm not really pulling, I'm actually fanning. Can you guys see what I'm doing? 
and that's how I keep them clean and that's how I can make them as big as I want because the hair is not secure it's open so I have the flexibility to pull as much as I want if that makes sense how long does the hair have to be to do this look uh honestly I think you ha if you have a, a a short bob you can still go for this look Missy's like gorgeous is there a way for me to do a variation of this on my own hair absolutely if you're good with hair like honestly I can do anything with my hair when it comes to my hair I can do anything <laughs> props to the one who can recreate those styles on their own this is all you can see what you see on my hair it's all I can do with my hair so are you braiding kind of loose uh not really but not very tight either so where can they get this crimper they can get it from the sexy hair website they have it uh, on their website who is doing your hair for your wedding Lala Zabduz oh my gosh that was <laughs> the number one question in the last couple of months and um, honestly I do not like any Abduz on myself <laughs> so I will just have the hair curled and I think anyone can do that. But I chose a, a, a lady that I worked with before and I really love her work. She's uh, based in Sacramento and she will do just some waves on my, on my hair. And of course I will wear extensions because my hair is really, really short. Uh, that question came from behindthechair.com. Oh, I love you guys. Big Sexy Hair says congratulations on your upcoming wedding, Mama. Thank you. You guys stay tuned. I know I'm not doing a lot of uh, live Instagram. I'm not. I usually like to keep my life very private, but I promise you guys that I will do live all Saturday from my wedding. You will get to see the dress and the location and you'll have to see my beautiful husband and all that. Okay, my handsome husband. <laughs> We're going back. We're going to take this. Let me clean this a little bit because it's a little mm -hmm. bit too messy. Go ahead. Can you start with damp hair? Absolutely. If you're looking for something very tight and very clean and very neat, like let's say the boxer braids, every time I do those, I actually spray the hair with water in order to achieve that cleanliness and uh, make it super tight. But if you want to pull the hair, you're not going to be able to pull the hair and pancake it if it's wet. You're going to have a really hard time to do that. Did you guys see what we did? We just twisted that braid underneath and I'm building my base to roll those. Uh... And when I do this, when I have a lot of hair like this, we have a lot of density here and a lot of volume. I have discovered if I open my my bobby pins and I do this, when I have this much hair into the bobby pin, this is how the bobby pin is going to stay. So when I deal with, with hair that has a lot of texture and a lot of volume, I'm not opening my bobby pins because they're going to stay open. So I actually kind of like wave them in. So Guadalupe says, hi Lala, how did your passion for braids come about? <laughs> That's a funny story to say. Um, well, back in 2014, for those of you who don't know, I've been a stylist uh, since 2015. I took my license in um, Romania as a plan B. I didn't know if any of my education will be recognized here, so I went and uh, took my license in Romania uh, before I came here back in 2006, and I absolutely fell in love with hair. So when I came here, none of my... Uh, education was recognized and um, I had to go to school all over again to take my license in California. I graduated in 2009. Um, when I came here I took uh, a job as a property manager. I couldn't um, find any other job and uh, two years later I got sick and tired of that. I didn't like what I was doing so I decided to go and take my license. I graduated in 2009 um, I want to tell you guys that I came here back in 2006 with a small suitcase, uh, $300 in my pocket, and my daughter was one and a half years old. I didn't know any English. So during school, all my instructors and all my colleagues keep telling me that I should come back when my English gets better, and I kept pushing and pushing, and eventually I graduated in 2009. 
uh, while I was working two jobs and going to school um, every afternoon. Um, I don't even know how I did it, honestly, but I managed to do it. So um, I rented the chair in 2009 and I did cuts in color until 2014. In 2014, one of my clients, she was a long time client. Um, she told me one day after I did her color, Lala, um, I'm getting married and I would love you to do my hair for my wedding. So uh, I tried to talk her out of that and I tried to explain to her that I am not a bridal stylist, that I don't even know how to braid. And she said, Lala, I don't want any braids in my hair. I just want my hair curly um, and pinned up. And I was like, oh, I think I can do that. I can uh, curl and uh, I can pin. I know how to do that. So we did a trial. She loved it. And on the day of the wedding, she came to me with a picture with that sleek big bun on the back. You can imagine my, um, my shock when that happened. I was like, okay, this is not what we agreed on. I don't know how to do that. Well, she was so convincing that she was like, Lala, you can totally do this. I trust you. You did my hair for so many years. You're very good. I know you can do it. She was so convincing that I believe that I can do it. So to make the story short, um, back then I didn't know anything. Are we back in? Are we back in? Yay! <laughs> So she was two hours late for her wedding because the style didn't come out the way she wanted. It was an absolutely mess. Uh, I made it out alive from that. 